Today, I'm with a special guest, Chris Perez from Dayton Audio, and it's really exciting because today he's going to share with us a product that's so epic, it shares its name. So, Chris, why don't you tell us a little bit about the Dayton Audio's new epic line of drivers? All right. Um, now we've got our... This is the E150 HE44, which is the uh, it's five inch epic. Um, and then we've also got the E180 HE44, which is seven inch. Um, they're classified, or we're calling them extended range subwoofers um, because these are they're high excursion drivers capable of good low end, but. Um, they also have the response that you'd expect out of a high-end woofer. Um, the five-inch good up to on and off axis up to three thousand hertz, and the seven-inch up to two thousand. Um, and and we want to we want to clear. I want to clarify that too because we were talking about that when a lot of people when look at frequency response. That's only one aspect of it, right? Because the other aspect of it is we also want to make sure that the distortion stays low enough that we can still cross it over and have it be usable and sound good. And right. your distortion levels are also very low, that all the way up to three kilohertz. So you could easily cross this over anywhere between two to three kilohertz and be fine using this in like a two-way system. Oh yeah, uh -huh. yeah. These are they're ideal for two-way. Um, you know, it, it, the make for a real simple crossover design. Um, like you mentioned while we were talking, the uh, the seven inch, it almost has the um, baffle step compensation built into the response. Yeah, these things are they're ideal for two-way designs. And now you guys designed this. And so I think it's kind of a misclassification, really, because you call it a subwoofer, but you had said, really, it's almost like a completely new classification because it gets the low-end base like a subwoofer, something like those who like the W5, this would be a, something similar in that regards, except actually gives it significantly more X Max, the W5. Is only nine and a quarter X max, and this is 14 millimeter for the five and a half. Is only is 14 millimeters X max. Mm -hmm. I don't remember what the seven is offhand, 14. and it's 14 as well. So they're both 14. <laughs> wow. And so you're looking at significantly more low end, but then the usability of bringing it all the way up to cross it over with whatever type of tweeter you have, because uh, most tweeters are going to be able to cross over in 25 by 2503 kilohertz. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, most one inch, I would say, or larger. Sure. I, yeah, you're right. You're right. Good. Good clarification. Most <laughs> we have a lot of listeners. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe not the the little three quarter inch. And some three quarter inches will too. But you're you're. I think the ones that you would probably be looking at for this something like the uh, Peerless Corundums. Um, yeah. The something like the CSS. Yeah. With, uh -huh. Or the ring radiators, things like those. Uh, yeah. We had mentioned the M Mag motor. Um, and it stands for multiple magnet air gap. Yep. Is that right? Yep. Multiple uh -huh. magnet air gap. And that the basic. Do you want to show us the multiple magnets that's on there? Yeah. Yeah, it's um, a lot of people are familiar with the uh, XBL two, where you get, you know, you, you essentially have a split gap or two two gaps with a a space between them. Generally, it's one piece of uh, top plate that's been milled out with a notch in the middle, and then your voice coil floats in and out of that or you know, there's underhung versions too, but um, the the problem with the uh, with the XBL2 is with that split gap. Since you just have a single motor down here, you know, ideally you want the gaps to be further apart. But as you do that, you're going to start losing magnetic flux on the top. All the magnetic flux will go down, hit the bottom plate, and you'll start losing it on the top plate. So there's really a balance with the uh, split gap motor with the XBL2 motors. You can't. You can only go so far before you're losing all your efficiency up top. That makes sense. So, um, you know, you could always go with a larger magnet, but now you get more saturation on the bottom plate. You do a thicker bottom plate. You may need a thicker top plate. It's just kind of snowballs. And so when you get that bigger gap, you get larger excursion, but then you start to lose linearity. Right. Uh -huh. Yeah, okay. you'll, you'll get more excursion, more BL towards the bottom of the... Uh, inwards than you will outwards. So your whole BL curve will be skewed to one side. Um, with the MMAG motors, they we've offset that by, you've got your two plates, top your top, second top plate, or your first top plate and your second top plate. But the space is um, 
or the gap is actually created with other magnets. Mm. So you've got the main magnet down here. This is the first or the bottom top plate. And then you've got reinforcing magnets and then the second top plate. So this drives more of the magnetic field up top. So you can actually space them out further. Um, and you notice the patent is an MMAG, multiple magnetic. This will be like the first step. You can actually, with this type of design, you can actually do another layer of magnets and then another plate. So you can really make some ridiculous gaps. But, um, you know, this and is so, uh, a so the goal for five oh, inch. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. So the goal with that is to give it a maximum excursion and while maintaining that linearity. Right. Your BL curve. Keep a real flat BL curve with. Uh, did you accomplish that? Ability. Oh, yeah, yeah. This is the BL curve of the five inch. Um, and as you can see, at 10 millimeters, well, at rest, at zero millimeters, we're just a little under nine tesla meters motor strength. Then all the way out at 10 millimeters, it's just a hair under nine <laughs> tesla meters for motor strength. Um, going in and out, uh, you know, the to the right is coil out, to the left is coil in. So even at 10 millimeters, there's no loss of, um, there are hardly any loss of BL, no significant loss. Uh -huh. So basically what you're saying is that uh, every time that you expect your excursion to uh, continue to double, it's, it's going to do as it's expected to, you're not going right. to get any type of loss there. Right. Yeah. You know, the, the standard driver or BO curve is going to be like a constant arc. It'll start falling off the second it leaves at rest. Um, so the second the cone starts moving, you're getting less output per watt. These things, you know, up until 10, 10 millimeters of excursion, you've lost nothing. And then even after that, at 70% BL, which is 14.7, if I remember right on these. But um, Wow, that's crazy. But 70% BL or 30% loss of BL, that's where they consider 10% distortion or an audible level of distortion. So it's not until you've hit 14 millimeters that there's any significant loss going on, at least no so loss you would ever notice. So you could make some really nice high-end speakers with this type of motor. There's only one other driver that I can think of that mimics this type of BL curve while maintaining high excursion, while also saying that they can do a two-way with it, and that's the the new Purify woofer. And those are um, significantly more expensive. I mean, I think if I'm if I remember correctly, they're about 350 bucks each. Um, gears are about. I think five and a half inch, about a hundred and something. Hundred dollars for the five inch and one twenty five for the seven. So significantly less. Yeah. Now, what would you think? Like, do you consider them comparable as far as like what they're all trying to accomplish, or how do you view that? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The purifiers are great. They the way they've managed their constant BL is a little differently. You know, instead of using multiple gaps or ridiculously large gaps or anything like that, they've actually done it with some trick winding. Um, mm. They've got. Some places, multiple layer, I think it's two layers down to one layer, back to two, back to one. It's uh, makes for a very complicated and difficult coil to wind. But, you know, the result is great. They've, you know, they've managed to achieve it really well. But, but um, you, but you that, think that, that yours that. would be, would you consider yours comparable? Would you consider it uh, something that people oh, very utilize? Oh, very comparable. You know, I'd put these right on the same level as the purifies. Yeah. Oh, really? Yep. A little bit I, less efficient, um, but... As far as frequency response and cone breakup, even and intermodulation distortion, all of that's going to be extremely low on these, you know, and all of that's because of that constant BL and the um, the compliance is, is real level, you know, across their excursion too, so. And that is one thing, it, you know, I, I just want to say you guys obviously went all out with materials. You went with the carbon fiber, uh, mm -hmm. you know, cone, everything went, you did really well. I think you even mentioned that you did uh, full copper within the gap. Yep, yeah, um, copper sleeve on the pole piece. All of that is all really, really nice features. Um, but of course, it doesn't matter unless it, it performs well. And it's nice to hear that it actually does perform well. And you'd mentioned the sensitivity. The thing that I want to mention, too, is with that built-in baffle step, at least on the 7-inch, uh, you could, you actually don't really lose the sensitivity that you would with like a normal woofer once you put it in you're going to lose a good three to six db once you stick it in a box where this one you know already has it mostly built in so you might lose what'd you say one db maybe if About you want a db if that yeah uh -huh. and, and it, that's if you're going full which a lot of people 
don't even go full baffle set. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're not in the middle of a room in most cases. So. <laughs> I'm always in the middle of a room. I don't know what you're talking oh, about. You are. Your speakers aren't. I, mean. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you mean. I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, that, I mean, honestly, they look fantastic. I, I think for the price, now I've never used one. So if I get some, I'll let you guys know what I think about them. But they look like such a unique product. I wanted to make sure that people got a good idea of what they had to offer because value-wise, they look phenomenal. These things will open up some possibilities for you know yeah. speaker designs that really haven't been out there, you know, without spending an absurd amount of money, you know, on, on your systems. But, uh, but yeah, these uh, these can definitely del deliver some you know game-changing type designs. So. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, too. I'll start a topic on the forum. So if anyone wants to talk about them on the forum, you guys can go in there, go ahead and chat about it, um, or head over to Parts Express. They have a great forum called uh, Tech Talk. Uh, head over there. I'm sure there's people going to be talking about them as well. We can throw some designs up there. Because I, I think with the five and a half inch, especially being the dual voice coil, you know, I think they'd be really cool in an MTM style setup. Yeah, I can see a lot of MTM or TMM type designs. You know, a tall, narrow tower with the five inch would be uh, just incredible. All right, Chris, thank you so much for uh, spending this time with uh, me today. Thanks for talking about the Epic series. This was an epic chat. I really appreciated it. Okay, no All, right. <laughs> All right, guys, this is Toys DIY Dio and Chris. We're yeah. out. Take it easy. <laughs>